Hi, Statesman Nation. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Playbook. We are here in a beautiful Penn Central Mall in the Oskaloosa News Studio. So uh, once again, thank you to Ken and Ginger also for allowing us to uh, host our weekly show in here. Um, guys, crossover season, we're going to start talking about winter sports. So um, let's talk about a few of the last week and then later on down the road, we can start talking about winter as well. But um, come right out of the gate and let's talk about uh, a nice Saturday of uh, football and soccer. Um, starting with football, uh, rough first half, but uh, the guys turned it around. I'm sure there was a spirited uh, conversation at halftime and they took care of business beating uh, the Yellow Jackets 53-24, shut them out 33-0 in the second half. Um, running, running, running as we, as we do all the time, 433 yards. Ben Sherman had a huge game, 183 and two touchdowns. Tommy Imbu with uh, 116 and three touchdowns. And we were plus four in the turnover battle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, that first half, you know, it's, it's homecoming. You know, everybody's kind of jazzed up. You know, there's a lot of energy, a lot of people. Um, and, you know, Graceland, they're not the, the greatest football team out there. Um, so I think maybe they – they were a little too amped up a little bit, and Graceland just kind of went out there. They started moving the ball well, but um, in the second half, like you said, uh, everything kind of changed, and we got back to playing statesman football, and that's just smash mouth football, playing good on defense, uh, running the ball well. Um, some good defensive plays, including a, was it a pick six? From yeah, it's Colton Horak, yeah, 82-yard yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pick um, six, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, really just a good win for them, and you know now they're back to 500 and ready to – go into the this final set of games. Yeah, okay. yeah. we were working men's soccer during the first half, so all we could hear was the Graceland coaches going crazy when they scored in that first half. But yeah. second half was much better, and talked to Coach Norberg down the field. He said he wanted his team to respond defensively, and boy, did they ever in that second half. And if you didn't see that Ben Sherman run, go yeah. watch the highlights. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we really should, like, in case you missed it type thing for that, because that was an amazing – like 49 yard run unfortunately he didn't finish it off he got yeah. tackled well, at the like like quarter long. yard yeah, line yeah, it was like i know it was almost in anyway, yeah but yeah throwing people off of him. oh yeah he literally just stiff armed the guy and yeah big stiff arm so yeah great one and oh start um you know got to be happy with it and now you got grandview uh next for the rock and ladder trophy and um you know keeping the, the season alive so uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit um women's volleyball yeah, um, they went down south to play Mid-American Nazarene last Thursday. It was the first time these two teams have met. Unfortunately, they came out on the wrong side of a 3-1 to one score. But honestly, if you look at this this game on, on the stat sheet, it was so close. Right. I mean, the three to, I mean, you would think that this game was a five-setter that went down to the wire. Uh, the Statesman dropped the first set 25-22, but responded with, a, with really a big 29-27 victory. It showed a lot of grit in that set. Uh, unfortunately, set three slipped away after they held a 19 to 15 lead late, but the Mid-America really got hot and they went on a 10-4 run to take the set. Um, you know, they, the ladies managed to keep the, the fourth set pretty close, but they continually found themselves playing catch-up. You know, they would get, they just get there and then just Mid-America would regain the momentum. Um, you know, Mid-America out hit us 173 to 162, uh, so that just kind of showcases how close really it really tight, was. Yeah. There was just a couple kills there that really was the difference in the ball game. Uh, Bibi Jaquez, she had a strong outing. She led her team with 16 while she had a 273 clip. Um, Libby Zorn and Dan Pinsinski both finished with 10, 10 kills. Uh, Annalisa Whitcomb, she handled the setting duties for the most part. She had 21 assists and 10 digs. She's really become just a double-doubles machine as yeah. of late, especially here down. Really good to see from her. Uh, Cameron Campbell, once again, 36 digs. I mean, she's been playing at an unbelievably high level. As of late, and Casey Gakusana finished with 20 digs. So the defense really was the story of this match for the Statesmen. Uh, I thought the defense really played well. So many people got involved. There was 12 different players that recorded the dig. I mean, that's yeah. that's just unheard of. People were just finding – they were in places where they needed to be and not letting many balls hit the ground. Um, and, yeah, unfortunately they came out, but – came out the loss. But, I mean, there's a lot of good things to take away from that ball game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a, a solid uh, mid-am team that – uh, it was a year older. They were really young last year and, and surprised some teams. And for whatever reason, they were ranked really low in the preseason poll. But they've you know, shown that they're one of the top teams in the league. And uh, going down there is not an, an easy trip uh, by any stretch. And, you know, gave them a good fight. Just came up short. So, Yeah, and fast forward to uh, <clears throat> for, to Tuesday where we 
we took on Clark. Clark is a very, very good team. Uh, Coach Cleaver, you know, has reiterated to me a few times about how well she thinks that we match up with them, and really we ma we matched up with them really well. I thought, yeah. um, you know, the first time we played them, uh, we were we were swept, but we were also down a couple of key players. Uh, this time we were at full strength. Um, we came out really strong, winning the first set 25-15, probably one of the best sets that we put together all year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a strong defensive presence that first set. You know, Clark hit a zero, zero, zero. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that was really good to see. Um, you know, we found, we found ourselves down 10-9 uh, in the first set, and then we ended up scoring 12 in the next 14 points, and that's, that was pretty dominant. Yeah, just rolled from there, yeah. yeah. And then um, falling set, uh, lost 25-20, but returned to take set or set three 25-23. Um, the third set was the strongest of the night for the Statesmen. Uh, on the offensive end, we hit a 341. I yeah. mean, it, everything was starting to click, but then the pride offensive attack really just came alive, and we ended up dropping the fourth and fifth sets, 25-13 and 15-7. So unfortunate loss, but... You know, once again, like those first couple of sets, there's a lot of good things to take away. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we were out here at 217 to 171. Uh, Corinne, Lap Corinne Lepper, excuse me, um, she finished with 16 kills, had a 233 clip. You know, she's continuing her strong sophomore campaign. Um, Annalise went up once again, another double double, uh, 26 assists, and she also had 16 digs. I mean, she's just really doing it all on both sides of the ball. Um, Cameron Campbell, another 36 digs, and Casey Gakusano once again with 10 digs. I mean, th those two have continually been in double-digit digs every night in and night out. Um, just to note about Cameron Campbell, she's now the two-time Heart of America Defensive Player of the Week. Yep. Um, she's collected 552 total digs this season, which ranks 11th nationally in her 5.1 digs per game, ranks inside the top 45 now. So she's putting together a great first year for the Statesman. And uh, it was nice to see Hannah Williams get in the mix on the defensive end for the Statesman. Uh, yeah. She had seven, seven blocks in, in that game, so something to build off of for her. Yeah, no, she's stepping up uh, nicely. It's nice to see that some of these freshmen, I mean, you got Cecily Lippard returning as well. Uh, she was, you could tell how important she is in that back line um, to be able to, to mix it up and everything. Um, yeah, Cameron Campbell, I think it was – early second set I looked at her stats and I'm like well she already has 20 digs like she was averaging like 14 a set and then that you know they found a way to get around her but she was yeah everywhere early on and uh, giving us a chance and you know unfortunately a, a team that you you need to beat to uh, keep your postseason uh, chance alive and you know Clark's a, a strong team I mean they're second in the, in the north for a reason so uh, just a lot of different weapons I don't think there's anybody you can mm -hmm. just key up on and uh, they just found enough ways to, to score points so yeah but definitely I haven't watched all the games, but of all the home games that I've been able to broadcast, that one looked like the Statesman had some of the best ball movement, especially yeah. those first and third sets. It just seemed to really gel and find the right person to hit it, and I was pretty impressed by that. Yeah, no, definitely. All right, um, moving on, women's soccer. Right, they took on Graceland on Saturday for homecoming, and it turned out to be the only loss on homecoming, which is a bit of a bummer because it could have been much closer. 4-1 uh, loss at the end of the day. Another Saturday where there was a lot of rain and right. weather that played into it. Not as much wind, but still not ideal playing conditions. And the Statesman could have made that scoreline better. Caitlin Fellaini looked really good, and for the first time in a number of contests, they were able to finally get the ball up to her and through the defensive line, which... Some games it had worked, some games it hadn't. But she had three chances, one on goalie, and credit to the Yellow Jacket keeper for keeping her off the scoreboard. But yeah. she had a few chances to bury it. And if you get a couple of those goals on the board, all of a sudden it's a one-goal difference instead of a three-goal difference. Iris Navarro eventually scores the only goal for the Statesman on a PK kick to make the score 4-1. to one. But you can also take some of that scoreline with a bit of salt because both Lillian Kuga Fountain and Zoe Ganley in the second half within the first five to ten minutes took an injury and had to leave so that's right. two key players on your defensive side that are now gone and that will hurt your team regardless of how good your subs are or not when your two starters that play almost the whole game every yeah. game aren't back there to help defend so a valiant effort and again if 
somehow the Yellow Jacket keeper doesn't get off her line in time, you're looking at maybe a 4-3 game, maybe a 3-3, 4-4. Well, could have, yeah, it could have totally changed the compl- uh, complexity. Complexion. That's yeah. what I was going to say, complexity. Complexion of the game, whatever it is, you know you know what I was looking for. Um, of that game could have been totally different. We could have had the lead, and then you know, now they're pressing, and maybe they make some mistakes, et cetera. But uh, instead, you know, they took the, the lead, and we were um, chasing from there. So uh, came up uh, a bit short. Um, men's soccer, if you don't – are you good? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm going to switch, yeah. switch over here. Men's soccer then finishing off um, – that doubleheader against Graceland, taking down the Yellow Jackets 5-0. That's a, a solid middle of the road Graceland team. They uh, you know performed well against some teams, but we just dominated as we've uh, been doing all year. So, uh, 25 to eight uh, shot tally. Eduardo Bonato, Bonato, right? <laughs> Uh, right. two, two goals. He's now one away from the school record for a guy that I think came into his senior year with like five goals, and he just didn't score uh, the first couple of years, and uh, he's all about it now. He's finding, <laughs> finding the back of the net. Uh, so he got a couple goals. Um, uh, Ethan Martinez, Jonathan Riley, and uh, Steve Avalar also scored. Donnie Messina with a couple assists, and the team wins yet again, 13-3, and 8-1 and one in the conference, and they're ranked in the top 10 for the first time ever Heck, in school yeah. history. So, um, side note, they're numbers 10 in the coaches poll, number 18 in the uh, RPI that just came out, which is the more true indication of who you are, strength of schedule and all of that. So, down a little bit, but still definitely obviously considered one of the best teams in the league, in the nation, excuse me. Yeah. Once again, this team just continues to take care of business. Um, you mentioned, you know, Eduardo Bonato getting into the mix this year, scoring goals. And I just think it's a testament to how just aggressive this team has been. Yeah. And really, they've been so aggressive on both sides of the ball and really just taking it to these opponents and, yeah, just really putting it all together. And it's been such a pleasure to watch. Yeah, I don't quite remember the shot total for Graceland in the second half, but I'm pretty sure it was Statesman a lot and Graceland like one or <laughs> very, two very, very few. in the yeah. second half. And this time, it was good to see that they didn't let Graceland score a couple of those games the last couple we had conceded first and you're playing from behind this time it was nope pedal down get them done and good to see a couple of the D guys Riley and Avalar get a goal they normally don't show up on the score sheet especially yeah. as defenders but great to see them notch something on their scorebook yeah for sure I mean that was just only one game of the weekend and now a full uh, week of uh, break until you get Evangel this weekend and just nice that you took care of business. That's all you got to do at this point. Just yeah. win. I mean, basically, you control your own destiny. You win. You get the nationals, and that's what they're, the guys are doing. They're they eye on the prize, and they're they're moving forward. So, all right, um, you finish up here with uh, golf and bowling. Right. So, women's golf, due to some issues on the home front, could not send a full team down to the Hart Preview Tournament at Osage down in the Ozarks of Missouri. But they did send the two seniors, Brittany Evans and Alexis Guimaraes, and both had great results. Diamarez came in fourth out of 20 players. 20 even. Yeah, 20, 20 even. 87 mm-hmm. and an 84 gives her 171. So certainly that could come down some, but still fourth. That's oh, a great, solid. great totally. placement for her because um, she had a couple holes, double bogeys or whatever. So I'm sure next time out, now that she knows the course, she can polish those off and shave a few strokes off. Brittany Evans, again, taking her second event in a row in terms of individual prizes. A 78 and a 76 for a grand total of 154. And she was only two strokes over over on the front nine total for both days. Wow. So she, the Lynx course, because it's three nine-hole courses. Yep. And the Lynx course, she absolutely was in complete control of the river one, which I assume the, runs right along a river. So right. that's yeah. what I assume means... Uh, presented a few more challenges, but still, now that she's seen it, that will definitely come down some for the Hart Tournament. And great to see that, despite not being able to see what a full team score would look like, if you have two of your top golfers already dominating most of the field and beating the the good golfer from Grandview, yeah, Kerrigan. Yeah, Carly Kerrigan. Yeah. yeah, and beating her by seven strokes, that's a great sign for this team for their spring season. Yeah, I mean, you got you got two of the best teams outside of us, Baker and Grandview there, and I mean, we're first and fourth. You don't know what the you know the other three individuals would have done, but you figure you'd be in good position to take care of those two. Mount Mercy is about the only other team that's uh, at all sniffing uh, near the top, so I think you're setting yourself up nicely for 
what you expect to happen next April. Yeah. So positive results there. And then bowling at the Columbia 300 Western Shootout over in Indianapolis. The men come home with their first top 10 of the year, finishing eighth with a total score of 8,935 pins. Logan Mason was 37th with the top score for the Statesman with a 201 pin average, a 224 individual game high. And it was kind of one of those interesting games where in terms of individual placement, the statesmen weren't all that high right. in 37. You're like, that's not really that high. There no. was 300, I think, individuals. So if you compare it to that, well, that's actually pretty good. But the team score is the thing that drove this team to success. So even though you're not seeing a guy take the individual prize, a great team effort by all of them. Most everyone had a close to 200 average. Uh, Cook had an average of 198. Kostrix had 197s. Uh, Freeze had 188. Both Kostrix got team highs at 266 and 277. So they had a couple games where they absolutely destroyed yeah. those pins down the lane. So pretty good, promising result for the men. Well, on the women's side, they bested their male counterparts. They finished fourth with a grand total of 8,261 pins. A few less teams, a few less bowlers on the women's side, but still a great, great result the yep. second time out for this team. Nicole Kraft finished eighth for second top ten in a row. A 192.5 average also paced the team with a single game high of 244. So, again, fantastic work from her. Bailey Palmer was 11th, just missed the top 10 by, I think it was one or two pins uh, based on average. She was at a 187.7, I think it was 188 or 189 right. for 10th. So strong result for her, 219 high. Kayla Gifford was 17th with a 183. Alexis Lake, a freshman, a 171 average and got an uh, individual of high of 239. Nicole Modier, 169 average and Gabby Evans, 170. So overall, not a lot of low scores. All the averages pretty close, which shows that this team is really strong top to bottom. And Definitely. just another good result for this team that Coach Brooks is pretty high on. Yeah, they're, like we said before, the women's team, nothing take nothing away from the men, but the women, I think, are looked at to excel at a higher level this year. They are very senior-laden, um, and this is going to be a squad that you – Excuse me. Expect a lot of uh, top five, top tens out of this year. If they're not in there, they're going to be very disappointed. And um, they keep on showing it against strong competition. So yeah, um, uh, some great schools at these events, and yeah. the individual winners were ridiculous. If you look at their scores, they were like two ten averages or, or two twenty or yeah, something. Yeah, they always pop off somebody. Somebody just has a big big day for sure. Again, both sides it shows that the statesmen have a better complete squad because their team score is in that running for best despite having individuals on our teams that are bowling the lights out they're still front running trying to get into that podium position yep definitely Alrighty, i think we've recapped everything so we come back we'll uh we'll talk about the previews in uh, a few minutes but uh before we do that uh, we've got a couple awesome segments coming up with uh some seniors as this is our senior day special so when we come back we'll uh, sit down with a few of those uh awesome student athletes you're inside the playbook. The student community at William Penn made an impression on me. It's a real statement that you can come here and be part of something real. We have the opportunity to participate in activities, to be involved, to make a difference on campus. The coaches are awesome. It's easy to play for coaches that care about you. It gets more effort out of you because you appreciate what they do. The real experiences at Penn have helped shape who I'm going to be when I graduate. I work harder because I want to be part of the conversation in class. William Penn gives me the freedom to be who I am now and the tools for who I want to be. Diversity runs deep at William Penn. Not only in the student body, which is made up of people from all over the world, but also in the diverse opportunities for hands-on learning. The equipment you get to use is legit. The experiences here will help me get a job when I graduate. I am a leader. I am a trailblazer. I'm proud to be a statesman. William Penn University. Make a statement, be a statesman. Oskaloosa, it's our community, and we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories, sharing its smiles, we're building community. 
keeping you informed, giving you a voice, letting you know you're never alone during the victories and the losses, happiness and pain. For tomorrow's a new day, and we'll be there, working for you, ready to tell your story. That's our commitment. It's what we do, now and in the future, because we're always on. We're Oskaloosa News. Segment, Casey Gakusana of the women's volleyball team, Charles Nelson of the football team, and Terry Jackson of the men's cross country team. So, all right, we're just going to be spitballing, flying all over the place here. So, uh, if I'm looking at you, I'm asking you a question. So, all right, uh, Terry, you're from Houston, Alaska, four year um, individual here at William Penn. Talk about um, entering college, what were your expectations coming in, and maybe how did they change as you? realized, hey, this is now collegiate running, so it's obviously a little bit different. Uh, so I wasn't really sure what I was expecting coming into college. Uh, I knew there was going to be a lot of stronger competition than there was back home. So the shift from you know, easy runs, messing around, not taking it seriously, is a major part of that first year. Uh, just growing in, helping make sure incoming freshmen understood the same thing. Uh, classes weren't what I expected. I thought big classes, you know. Expected a lot more than 20, 30 people, which I really appreciated being small. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't change it. Yeah. All right. Um, Casey, all right. You're from Hawaii, KL, Hawaii. Um, why'd you come to William Penn? <laughs> like, why, why, like, not why, why William Penn? Why Iowa, I why should say. Iowa? Why, why the Midwest? Why not stay on the beaches? Well, I thought, you know, since living there my whole entire life, you know, something different, and I thought, I literally said, why not Iowa in the middle? So try something new, something different. So, oh, yes. Yeah, Sometimes. we'll have you all talk up. Like, be excited that you're in here. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, yeah, why not Iowa? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Charles, got one of the best beards on campus, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'd love to emulate it. Um, trying. My wife also wouldn't let me have that big of a beard. So, um, all right. Why did you decide to go beard, and why why so long? And have you caught any flack from mom and dad from it or anything like that? Um, well, I I, I know I really just like it. You know, yeah. I feel like it fits me. It um, works, man. <laughs> and you know, it's just kind of it's it's kind of just become who I am. It's, right, it's part of me. You know, I've joked about shaving uh, the night before graduation to shock everybody. Right, but I don't think I'll do that. It'd be kind of too much for me all at once. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, my mom. She likes it, but she does wants me to, to cut it down <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, so. just a little bit. She's like, no, you're going to have to be a professional someday. Like, <laughs> One wanna, of these days. Yeah, be that guy. So, All right, I'm going to stick with you for a second uh, since you brought mm -hmm. it up. Uh, professional um, future plans, um, as we're going to talk about this mm -hmm. with all of you guys since you're seniors. But future plans, I mean, you want to be a teacher, correct? Right, yeah. So, so we'll talk uh, about I'm, that a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to school to be an elementary teacher. Okay. Um, my, my ideal grade is first, second, or third is what I'm thinking. Okay. So sticking younger. Um, and I've, I started off wanting to do high school. And then I spent uh, a day in an elementary classroom, and I just fell in love with it. You know, and I'm, I'm glad I've, I switched, and I never want to go back. Well, heck, your beard's going to be, you keep it growing out, so your beard's <laughs> going to be bigger than some of those kids. So um, how has uh, how sports prepared you to become a teacher? How has football and, you know, the teamwork and all of mm -hmm. that, and, and now you're, you know, a leader, you're, you know, a starter and a leader and all of that. How is that going to, I think, prepare you to become, you know, going to your profession? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's definitely taught me how to work hard. Um, going going into the field, it wasn't, I wasn't expecting w what it is now. You know, right. there's, there's a lot more work. There's a lot more um, understanding of how people learn and stuff like that, uh, technical stuff. And I think, you know, from football, I've learned just, you know, you, you, you have to be dedicated. You have to be bought in completely. And if you're not, you're not going to be the best you can be. Right. And um, the thing that I've learned about it the most is the amount that you're prepared 
is only the best that you can make your students be. Right. So the better you are now and the, will be the better you are down the road. So it'll help your students out so much more. For sure, for sure. Um, all right, Casey, back to you. Um, you had a coaching change. You're one of the only ones, actually, I think that we're um, talking to today that had a coaching change mid-career like this, um, going from, uh, wow, I just, Jenny. Words. I, yeah, yeah, I just forgot. Yeah, I need words. Uh, going from Jenny to Alicia. Um, talk about how, that's perfect, good job, um, how that had impacted you and, you know, in going through that transition. Um, I think our our old coach, she kind of was like, um, I really liked her coaching, you know. Um, style. Yeah, background. Yeah, it's style, words. <laughs> words, again. But I think now this coach, she's more, I want to say, like, uh, like, wow, words. Just, like, get to the point. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. she's more, obviously, you could tell, like, more active and just in with it and in with the girls and, and um, so I thought it was a, I thought it was a good change. So yeah, um, that I guess problematic knowing, hey man, I, I like I was so used to that, and now right. I've got you know to figure it all out again. And you don't want to, nobody ever wants, to, nobody likes change. Let's be honest, you know. And so you got to do this now it, for your last two years, and and especially your last two years being now you're supposed to be a leader and everything, being an upperclassman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely was a shocker. We didn't. I we actually some of us girls didn't see it coming until we got like that meeting and whatnot. Um, but I don't think it was more. I don't think it was a like. I didn't see it as like oh, so now we have to switch all these gears. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. It was more of a like okay, this is gonna be exciting. You know, new new coaching style, new like um, I want to say. Uh, New culture, yeah, just new just culture, different, yes, yeah, something yes, different, something right? different. So, yeah. it was more of a e exciting um, challenge not, yeah. instead of like, oh, now we have to change everything, right, and right. you know, so yeah, it was more exciting. Than cool. Anything, okay. So. Very cool. All right, um, Terry, you guys are doing yeah. a really good job of moving yes. that mic, so let's keep doing that. That's awesome. Um, all right, senior. You know, last last uh, go around here. What legacy do you want to leave here for the William Penn cross country program? Like, all right, everybody always says I want to leave it in a better position than I, you know, uh, came into. How are you doing that? Uh, definitely. I mean, helping freshmen with little things that I picked up in college because a lot of them came with more experience than I have even now. So just the adjustments I've noticed from college, the things I was told at coming in as a freshman, the like, you know, continuing continuing I guess the legacy that the seniors left before the just you know making it as help like being as much help as I can while still you know letting them be the runners that they already are uh, just looking to move up in conference right okay um, finish off uh, you here before we get into a, a really quick set of questions but future plans for yourself uh, back to Alaska staying in Iowa trying some completely different area uh, yeah it's in the it's up in the air right now okay. it's not looking like Alaska though I'm looking to stay down here explore just do anything wildlife biology related conservation whatever okay very cool all right Casey back to uh Thank you. make sure I got this okay uh legacy you want to leave um just kind of like what Terry said so kind of like keeping that um that hard working like hard working motivation kind of type vibe with like with like us seniors and trying to just like help the freshmen out and like the younger ones and kind of like I said like what Terry said keep that yeah so. definitely all right uh, and Charles you're gonna get a totally different question here um, being that you're um, you got the big game not mm -hmm. to say anybody else's games aren't big not saying that but big game the rock and ladder uh, trophy coming up against Grandview mm -hmm. uh, what are you guys seeing on Grandview and how are you going to beat the Vikings? Because they look uh, not unstoppable. Not going to say that, but they, they look pretty tough. Right. I mean, it, it's Grandview week. You know, it's always mm -hmm. an important week. Uh, you know, in practice, everybody's excited and and ready to go and ready to play. You know, Tuesday when we start. Um, but I, th I think the biggest thing is that we're still we're still focused in practice and we're using that energy in a good way to not get distracted. Um, as far as like the game plan goes, it's going to be a typical statesman football game. You know. We're gonna we're gonna line up on offense and we're gonna run as hard as we can at you and right. you have to do your best to stop us and our defense has been playing great. Um, I, I think if we come out how we did the second half, 
uh, of last week against Graceland and the two weeks before against Mill Valley, I think we'll have a great game on Saturday with us on top. Yeah, I, th I always say that a rivalry game, you can throw all of the odds out the window. Mm -hmm. I mean, both teams, there's going to be plenty of uh, emotion going on there. So, sure. it, it, yeah, it could be anybody's ball game. So best of luck. All right, um, we're going to just jump around here, guys. So we've got the Furious Four. You can thank uh, Jared for this one. Um, we've had the questions, but he said Furious Four. This sounds cool, so we're going to go with it. Uh, a lot of, I think all of you guys actually have, have done the Statesman Pick 6 or some variation of that, but this is a little bit different. So they picked four numbers, and it correlates to these, uh, these questions here. And I'm going to hopefully not get totally lost on who I'm talking to. But all right, Casey, uh, number four, who's your favorite athlete? Your favorite, like, your favorite athlete, professional athlete. It could be your, your teammate is your favorite athlete. I don't know. Who? My favorite athlete. You can't say Rashawn Coleman. You can't. You can't make his. You can't make his head any bigger than it is. <laughs> he won't be able to walk through a door. Um. Honestly, I really don't have one. Okay. But I really do look up to Rashawn Coleman. Like he's he's definitely a good motivator and he really works really hard in and out so yeah okay all right I'll, I'll let you have that one that's fine you can have it all right um <laughs> <It'll Wow>. work. <laughs> <laughs> all right terry uh number five uh if you could have dinner with any two people past present living dead whatever who would they be uh <coughs> honestly probably <coughs> austin DeSanto, santo wrestles for iowa okay and <coughs> I don't know anybody else. I'm Family members that uh, maybe a, a grandpa or something that you never got to meet that you've heard all these great stories uh, of. Yeah, probably the, my grandpa I'm named after. Okay. That would be a good one, I think. Awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, Charles, number seven, your favorite flavor of ice cream. Yeah, I know. you. Yeah, he gets the easy one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky. Um, I'd say my favorite's uh, chocolate chip cookie dough. Okay. That's always a good one to go to. This is such a generational thing. I can't believe how many people that I've interviewed the last month or so have said cookie dough or some variation of that. And it's like, that's, that's obviously what you guys like. And then go with it. Okay. Uh, Terry, number 11, your favorite sports team? Uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. So yeah, maybe maybe part outside, of the reason why you moved to Iowa so you could be close to Kansas City. Outside yes. Of the outside of the statesman, of course. Okay. Uh, Charles, number 18, uh, your all-time favorite movie? Oh man, I'd say it's it's close between Rocky three and Rocky four. Okay, those are greats. They are love greats. Them. Rocky four, I don't think gets as much attention as it should. Mm -hmm. I don't know for some reason I love that movie. Like I think that's the best of the whole whole series. But I think they're um, all on Netflix too. Why? Okay, I guess yeah. I know what I'm watching Watch tonight. All times. right. <laughs> okay, uh, Casey, number eight. What's your favorite restaurant? Ooh, my favorite restaurant is. It can be here or back home. I know, I'm trying to think. Okay. There's really good ones back at home. I'm going to have to go with Kahoo Grill. Okay. Kahoo Grill? Yeah. Okay. Anything can't, can't special get, about it? I really like their uh, fried rice. Okay. It's really good. All right. Yeah. Go with it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stick with you for a second. Yes. Uh, number three, favorite thing about this women's volleyball program? Favorite thing about this program? I think... Uh, there's a lot of good things about it, but the most, I think, is that I get to play with um, my former teammate from back at home, which is Tanaya. Tanaya, yep. Yeah. I think that's the most. Because, like, that's, like, who would have known, you know, that she comes here, from, yeah. you know, she came here from all the way to Hawaii, yeah. so... I well, and she left cool. and came back, so she must have right. missed you, right? Exactly. <laughs> You're very special, and she couldn't stay away. All right, uh, Charles, number 22. Uh, what are you What are you listening to right now? Right now, it's it's kind of a, an odd mix um, between Van Halen and Frank Sinatra. If that's wow, such that a thing. is yeah. I, I don't know how you could how you could marry those two together. Those are mm -hmm. totally different genres, but that's very cool. Little Frank, little Frank before the Grandview game to get you pumped up? Just a little bit. You know, calm okay. down, relax, <laughs> yeah. and get ready yeah. to go. Yeah, I feel like I'm not cranking up Frank to, uh, to get pumped <laughs> up, but could be wrong. All right, Terry, number 13, uh, your favorite type of food? Uh, cheesecake. Cheesecake. Yeah. Any kind of cheesecake or just straight? A any kind of cheesecake. 
Ooh. So. <laughs> So Cheesecake Factory would be your answer to uh, number whatever it was, eight, would be Cheesecake Factory, would be your favorite restaurant. Okay. All right. I'm going to finish off with you then. Uh, 34, your favorite thing about your sport? Uh, the people. You get a lot closer to people you didn't realize you are going to when you go on a 10-mile you know, run or whatever. Right. Talk to this kid three times outside of practice, but you run, you get to know a lot about everybody. Yeah, I heard that. You guys just talk random things. I mean, what, what else are you going to do for 10 miles or whatever? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very cool. All right, uh, Casey, number 12, uh, dream vacation. Dream vacation. You already come from the dream vacation, so I don't know how you can answer this one. I think my one, dream vacation, we would have to go back to that Bora Bora. Bora Bora? Yes. Okay. Oh, have you already answered this one? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it wasn't I'll, a dream vacation. I think it was just my... Place you want most like yeah, to visit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Bora Bora is still a good answer. Yes. I'll let you have it. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Charles... Finally, number 30, uh, do, do, do. if money were no object and you could not be a professional athlete, what would your dream job be? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. You can, you can say teacher if you have to. Yeah, right? so, uh, I mean, you can, live, you can live the dream. It's really okay <laughs> to live the dream. Uh, I, re I really enjoy teaching, but I think um, what I'm most forward looking forward to uh, is the coaching part of that. I okay. um, look to go, go coach football back right. home. Um, hopefully get to coach my younger brothers. Cool. I think that will be a fun experience. Um, but I, I think that's what I do. Okay, very cool. All right, guys. Um, I think we're done. You guys all did shout outs probably back in the day, so you can say hi to anybody else too. I mean, you got the camera right over your right shoulder, but you just want to wave hi and say hey. Hi, see, family. see you guys soon. <laughs> Love you. Awesome. All right, one more time. Terry Jackson of the men's cross country team from Houston, Alaska. Uh, Casey Gakusana from KO Hawaii from the women's volleyball team. And Charles uh, Nelson uh, from Jefferson City, Missouri on the football team. So we come back, we're going to do this again, but with two new student athletes, you are inside the playbook. The student community at William Penn made an impression on me. It's a real statement that you can come here and be part of something real. You have the opportunity to participate in activities, to be involved, to make a difference on campus. The coaches are awesome. It's easy to play for coaches that care about you. It gets more effort out of you because you appreciate what they do. The real experiences at Penn have helped shape who I'm going to be when I graduate. I work harder because I want to be part of the conversation in class. William Penn gives me the freedom to be who I am now and the tools for who I want to be. Diversity runs deep at William Penn. Not only in the student body, which is made up of people from all over the world, but also in the diverse opportunities for hands-on learning. The equipment you get to use is legit. The experiences here will help me get a job when I graduate. I am a leader. I am a trailblazer. I'm proud to be a statesman. William Penn University. Make a statement, be a statesman. Oskaloosa, it's our community, and we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories, sharing its smiles, we're building community, keeping you informed, giving you a voice, letting you know you're never alone, during the victories and the losses, happiness, and pain. For tomorrow's a new day, and we'll be there, working for you, ready to tell your story. That's our commitment. It's what we do, now and in the future. Because we're always on. We're Oskaloosa News. Welcome back, Statesman Nation. We have a couple of soccer players now in the studio. Uh, we're joined now by Donnie Messina from Inglewood, California. L.A., right? How, how you guys do your <laughs> thing? That, yeah. And then also uh, from the men's soccer team, sorry if I didn't mention that, and then Riley Ludwig uh, from Big Bear City, California, on the women's soccer team. So, all right, guys. Um, again, just like the first segment, we're going to jump around a little bit and if I'm looking at you, I'm basically asking you a question. So, all right, uh, Donnie, we'll start with you. Um, <clears throat> transferring from California uh, to Iowa, talk about um, you know 
making that transition to the Midwest? I mean, did, do you want to go to the Midwest or, you know, what, I guess it's a two part question. What kind of sold you on the Midwest? And what kind of sold you on, you know, William Penn? Um, well, <clears throat> growing up in California, there's a lot of great soccer and competitive soccer there. Um, well, Jamie came to one of our practices at my JUCO and he liked the way I played, liked the way a couple of my teammates here also at Penn played, which ended up coming from the same JUCO as I did. And when we came on our official visit, like obviously it's not California. It's right. <laughs> yes, it's, it's Iowa. not. <laughs> it's Oscillus, Iowa. Hmm. So like we're getting a complete like change in the way we were brought up. Right. But what really sold us on Iowa, I like to say the vision we saw Jamie yeah. tell us. He wanted us to come in and just change like the way we played the game, like change the way Penn played the game and p give it some more like, he said he said he wanted some men, but we came in and obviously we, we had a really good last season. We came in and just destroyed pretty much a lot of competition and yeah. we broke a lot of records in our season. Unfortunately, we didn't end up ma in, at nationals but it was still one for the books yeah. as we broke a couple records. And yeah, like I'll say Jamie's vision on what he wanted us to come in and do really sold us on Iowa. Yeah, you keep on saying we a lot. So yeah. I, how much was it that, all right, you, and I'll, I'll fill everybody in, Luis Amasquita and uh, Steve Avalar, you guys all coming from LA Harbor. Um, how much was it that, hey, we're going to the same place? Like, we want to continue playing together? Or was it that it just worked out that you guys were all end up being sold on William Penn? Or was it trying to be stay as a package? Um, it, well, we all had a couple offers to go to different schools. But we, we didn't really want to go with just by ourselves right. and not really know anybody there. We wanted to at least have people we know there just to be more comfortable in yeah. a sort of way. So we all decided just like, and we liked the way, what Jamie's told us as well on wanting to come here and change like our level of play. Right. So we all decided just to come here and yep. and just change the game. Got a good package out of it. I like it. It worked. Okay. Um, three defenders too, which is you know totally changed our back line. All right, Riley. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, you've dealt with uh, quite a few injuries. Uh, one uh, very big one uh, before last year. Um, but talk about not so much on the injury side, but what you learned from the injuries that, you know, hey, they made me a better person, all of that, you know, it, it's cliche stuff, but you had to actually deal with it. And, yeah. you know, it's definitely a setback and does a lot to you mentally, physically, all that. But it's a motivation to just get back and get right, be able to play again. And I don't know, it's sad to be out. But yeah, it's nice for when you do come back. And I'm glad I got to play at least a couple games this yeah. season and be able to play my last two as well. Yeah. How much did it prove to you, like, what you're capable of? Yeah, definitely. Like, I didn't think that I could come back as good as I was, but I believe, like, I came back decent enough. I was, didn't really lose anything. And right. Yeah. I'm just – it didn't – it did a lot to me, but then again, like, I uh, gained a lot as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, totally switching gears on this, but talking about uh, as a goalkeeper, um, you know, it's a it's a very difficult position. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I'm just going to say the most difficult. Take nothing. <laughs> don't don't get mad about that, Donnie. But the goalkeeper, you know, the, all the pressure is on you. In the end, yeah. if you don't stop the ball, hey, well, the goal goes on you. It doesn't go on anybody else. Um, Why did you decide to become a keeper? And you're a very aggressive keeper, as mm -hmm. good keepers have to be. Mm -hmm. When did, did you just learn, I, I know I'm aggressive, so I know I can be a good keeper, or I'm a goalkeeper, and now I have to become aggressive? What, what Chicken and the egg, which one came first? Yeah, I don't know. I feel <clears> like uh, I did play on the field a little bit, too, and I was aggressive on the field. Right. So moving into the goal, I didn't lose any of my aggression. I just – it was easier to be aggressive because you don't get as many fouls or yellow cards like that. It's easier to just body up. But, yeah, I started – playing goalkeeper when I was like 10 years old I just got thrown in the goal because we didn't have one and then right. since then I've been one, been a goalkeeper but I did play on the field a little bit but I the goal is where I like to play yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well it fits you fits you yeah. well all right uh, Donnie uh, let's talk about that that cannon for an arm man <laughs> um, you are uh, one of the most explosive players in a game because of your arm in a game that's played with your feet yeah. um, Kind of the same idea. Did you, when did you learn that? Hey, well, I got a really good arm here. Like this can, this can help me out. Or is it just, I mean, when 
at some point you figured out, wow, I could throw the ball really far. Yeah. Um, in high school, hmm. uh, I was lucky enough to play two sports, well, three sports, but two sports. I played soccer in high school. And a really big one for me was water polo. I okay. played water polo in high school, which is pretty much soccer in the water. Yeah, yeah a lot of overhand your, throws. Yeah, exactly. You use your arms. Um, so after playing water polo a couple of years in high school, I kind of like developed a, a nice little throw, and just I just kept working on it, kept working on it, and it came out to be a, a really – big part of our game today yeah no soccer. yeah for sure imagine if you threw a flip in on that right. you gotta work on your right. flip yeah, and know, that know, ball go on completely to the other side yeah, that'd be insane. um <clears throat> arms holding up and everything uh, good everything, everything's good right now you're getting older man i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right you're do that right. forever you're right um but yeah everything's good my shoulders feel good i make sure to get treatment on them pretty much after every game just nice. to make sure just to prevent injury yeah just to prevent anything right Right. can cause me not to throw in the balls yeah. as far. I was going to say, as much as uh, everybody else is, you know, working on their knees and ankles and stuff, you're coming in just to work on your shoulders, My so shoulders, yeah. for sure. All right, uh, Riley, back to you. Um, what are you, as you're closing out your career here, what are you trying to instill, and what have you tried to instill um, in a very young team? I mean, at times you guys were yeah. rocking, like, 10 <laughs> freshmen and sophomore, yeah, and sophomores in front of you, started. so... No, I just feel like as a senior, like being looked at as a leader, just making sure that they stay motivated to actually be here for soccer and uh, just put in that effort every day because it goes by super quick and yeah. it's you're gonna, it's going to be gone <laughs> in a blink of a second. So just take all those three-a-day practices, those late-night practices, every time you have together, just take the time to appreciate it and just work hard because – Winning a game, losing a game, it's soccer, and you are here to play soccer. So Definitely, definitely. Um, all right, you guys are both going to get this question. I'll do Donnie first. Uh, back to you. <clears throat> um, future plans. Uh, are we staying in Iowa? Are we going back to L.A.? Are we are going to try something new? Um, I don't know what that red hair, man. I, uh, I, you, 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 can do, you can go anywhere. I feel like Hollywood's beckoning you again. Yeah, man, of course. Uh, as of right now, for sure, I'm going back home. Yep. Just uh, trying, to, trying to set – my like trying to set my moves right to be able to find a great uh a great job that can support me and and obviously support my hopefully my family in the future right. but any any ideas are we going to start a, a you can be a mogul or something or <laughs> <laughs> um right now i'll probably like i'm a sports management ma major yep. so um i will probably talk to my community college coach to see if i can intern with him just to learn the ropes of just at a at a JUCO, and then from there work my way up. Sure. Okay. All right, Riley. Uh, same question. What are you? What's the plans going back to Cali as well? No, I don't think California yet is okay. in my future. Well, it's in my future, just not quite yet. Okay. But somewhere not in Iowa. We're looking at a couple different states, but not sure. I'm definitely gonna get my master's degree. Okay. Start applying for those soon. <laughs> Masters in uh, school psych. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm double major in human services as well. So hopefully I can get a job in the human services department while I'm working on while my you're masters. Doing that, right. Yeah, I definitely want to work in a school district, being a school psychologist. Very cool. Okay. Awesome. Okay, guys. All right, ready for the Furious Four? Yes. I, put up, no. I actually have to put up the four for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, Riley. First off, uh, number twelve, uh, dream vacation. Dream vacation, Italy. Italy, okay. Yeah. Any certain part of Italy, or just? No, my dad and stepmom went there for their honeymoon, so okay. I've seen pictures and stuff, and I want to go. Yeah, okay. Well, there's so many different parts of Italy. That's a, that's <laughs> why I ask. Like, maybe you want to do Venice. Maybe you want to do way up in the Alps. Okay. I'm not sure. Just do it all. Do it all. <laughs> okay, Donnie. Uh, number seven, favorite flavor of ice cream. Vanilla. Okay. Simple. All right. Any sprinkles on that? Any syrups? Just, 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 nah, just, just vanilla. Just vanilla. Okay. All right. That'll work. Uh, Riley, back to you. Number 18, all-time favorite movie? Mean Girls. Mean Girls? I got that. Oh, that's <laughs> right. You did have that last time. I remember you saying that because you didn't know what. The Wednesday the 18th yeah, or something. The Wednesday like the 18th. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for you being your favorite movie, you should have known that for sure. Yeah, okay, sorry. no, you're fine. <laughs> All right, Donnie, uh, number ten. What's some advice that you'd give a junior high, high school kid wanting to uh, play collegiately? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would, I would easily tell him just to make sure he puts in the work. What he puts in is what he will get out of it. 
um, just like just if he can type like look up college athletes, you know, at some point they were working when nobody was looking at them. They're even when the cameras weren't on them, they're still working. Right. So what you put in is what you get out. So just going going the gym, eat, do you, do everything you can to get your body prepared to play collegiate and like I said, yeah. Yeah. What you put in is what you get out. Sweet. Okay. All right, number twenty six, Riley. Um, who in your life has been the most influential person? Definitely my mom. She's okay. been by my side through any type of decisions I've made or anything like that. And I always fall back to her for anything I need, which yep. I get to see her tomorrow. There you go. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, back to you, Donnie. Number 11, your favorite sports team? My favorite sports team? Real Madrid. Okay. It's a soccer team in Spain. Yeah. I know some things about soccer. Come on. <laughs> Give me a little credit. <laughs> All right, um, and then finally, Riley, number 30. Uh, if money were no object and you couldn't be a pro professional athlete, what's your dream job? What I want to be, a school okay. psychologist. Yep. I don't know, I've always wanted to do that ever since I was little. So, I mean, and nothing's really changed. Yeah. Through my JUCO, through here, I've always had the same major just work help, for it. So. Just helping the kids out, right? Yep. There you go, sweet. Okay, all right, Donnie, last question for you, number 29. Two part question. What one activity absolutely terrifies you and how much money would it take to do it? Um one activity that really terrifies me. Uh uh the deep uh the shark cage. The, shark cage? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna need a million or something <laughs> more because Seen a couple of movies where the shark cage falls and it's not, it's not. Yeah, don't mess with that. That shark me. cage, that's not, that's not keeping Jaws back for yeah, sure, we right? We don't belong in the water. No, yeah, it's, we belong right there on the, along the beach, right? Yeah, exactly. Not in the water. Right on the sand, not yes, in the water. Exactly. All right, guys, uh, I'm both from California. No, hopefully you, I, you're seeing your family. Hopefully, family yeah, coming. My family comes tonight. Okay, actually. well, then tell them, see them quick, see them soon. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> see you guys in a few hours. Brian, Kevin, Jax. I oh yeah, you forgot some shout outs last yeah. time. So you wanna you get everybody this yeah, time? I'm good. You good? Okay, all right, sweet. Okay, once again, Donnie Messina from uh Inglewood, California, the men's soccer team, and Riley Ludwig from Big Bear City, California, the women's soccer team. Thank you guys so much. Best of luck uh, the rest of your time here at William Penn. When we come back, Jared and Justin will be back in the, the seats and we will preview next week's games. The student community at William Penn made an impression on me. It's a real statement that you can come here and be part of something real. We have the opportunity to participate in activities, to be involved, to make a difference on campus. The coaches are awesome. It's easy to play for coaches that care about you. It gets more effort out of you because you appreciate what they do. The real experiences at Penn have helped shape who I'm going to be when I graduate. I work harder because I want to be part of the conversation in class. William Penn gives me the freedom to be who I am now and the tools for who I want to be. Diversity runs deep at William Penn. Not only in the student body, which is made up of people from all over the world, but also in the diverse opportunities for hands-on learning. The equipment you get to use is legit. The experiences here will help me get a job when I graduate. I am a leader. I am a trailblazer. I'm proud to be a statesman. William Penn University. Make a statement. Be a statesman. Oskaloosa, it's our community, and we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories, sharing its smiles, we're building community, keeping you informed, giving you a voice, letting you know you're never alone during the victories and the losses, happiness, and pain. For tomorrow's a new day, and we'll be there, working for you, ready to tell your story. That's our commitment. It's what we do, now and in the future. Because we're always on. We're Oskaloosa News. 
Welcome back, Statesman Nation. We're going to preview a whole uh, docket, because that's a word. Jared's Jared noticed yeah. a full <laughs> docket of games. Actually, not too entirely crazy, but uh, like I said, we are in crossover season now officially busy, busy. with uh, basketball starting up as well. So before we get to uh, the winter sports, talk uh, a little bit of football. Let's talk some soccer, all that. Starting with football, rocking ladders up for grabs uh, once again this Saturday. Um, and... Grandview is Grandview. Grandview is number four in the nation, one of the best teams uh, out there. And um, so far they've taken on all comers and uh, handled them. They did show a little bit of uh, vulnerability uh, last week against a really strong Culver Stockton uh, pass uh, offense. And honestly, Culver statistically should have beat them. They lost mm -hmm. 20, or, uh, Grandview won 21-18, but Culver rolled them, but they had four turnovers in the end, Ooh. just couldn't finish off the drive. So... Uh, again, there might be something, not that we're a passing team, but maybe they're showing a little bit of something that they've you know, got some uh, chinks in their armor. So um, really balanced attack uh, for Grandview. Johnny Sullivan has passed for over 1,000 yards. He's rushed for over 300 uh, as their QB, but it's all about defense with them. Uh, second overall in uh, opponent rushing yards, third overall in total yards with only 230 average. So it's going to be tough sledding for the statesmen. But you know what? Again, rivalry game, so throw it all out the window and then see who can come out with more emotion, and, and that might be what happens. So Yeah, um, this is a road game for the Statesmen, so already you know a little, a little tougher going on the yep. road. Um, it was two years ago hmm. we, uh, we won the Rock and Ladder Trophy, um, so there's some guys on this team still that have known what it's like to win it, and know what it's like to lose it. Exactly. So they've seen both sides of the coin, and you know they know they really know what this game's all about. And I think it's so important for those leaders to step up and you know <clears throat> kind of show them how important this game really is. Um, you know, it's a rivalry game, and all things kind of go out the window in rivalry games. But I look for the statesman. You know, we, um, Charles said, you know, we're gonna go out there, and we're just gonna play statesman football. Yep. You know, we're gonna run it, run it at him, run it at him hard. Um, and it's gonna come down to the defense, I think, though. The yeah. Defense has to has to come up with some big plays. You saw Corn Hork. Yep. Um, Next week, or next week, last week, uh, come up with the big pick six. I, I feel as though the statesmen are going to need to uh, have something along the lines of something like that to really get them going yep. and uh, get the emotions high, get the emotions going, and um, you know special teams too. Right. We've, we've heard Co uh, Coach Hafner um, talk about special teams, you know, all year long. You know, we need a big play from special teams. And I just think we need one of those too, and yep. just really control the ball, control time of possession, um, and that sort of things. I think. Statesmen have a legitimate shot in this game, considering we haven't lost in four games. Yeah, and again, with Culver coming up and pushing a Grand U team, you start thinking, well, all right, there is a chance. And Alex Grehan has been running the offense pretty dang well. Yeah. And he's also thrown well, which obviously we're not going to throw a ton. But Grandview's going to prepare thinking, all right, we're going to have to put guys, the secondary scoot them up and make sure we make the right runs to take out whoever is running the ball. So there's going to be a chance every once in a while to throw it. And if Colfer did that successfully, there's a chance you can yeah. every once in a while pop off that play-action pass for a big gain, and that will be big. And I think you're right. Defense will be the key. They've done a great job the past few games of locking down opponents and creating some turnovers. Clayton Norberg's got the turnover chain going, right. uh, <laughs> and he adds a link every time there is a turnover. And so I bet he's hoping to add a couple more this Saturday, and we'll see if the defensive line can get a good push. Yeah, anything's I, possible. Yeah, and I, I I think the an important piece to this defensive recipe is the uh, not not just the secondary. The young we have a fairly young secondary, but the linebacking core. You know, you got yeah. your uh, Jace Newbauer, who seems to be in on almost every play, just making yeah. tackles right and left, and you have a guy like JT who can you know drop back into coverage a little bit and also come off the, the edge and rush. So I think that's a big, will be a big uh, key to their success. Yeah, well, and, and haven't mentioned this, but unfortunately we're going to be playing without our best pass rusher, and Rashawn Coleman, who uh, injured his knee last weekend, and hopefully it's not as serious as we're, as we're thinking, but he's definitely not available. So that's a, a huge loss there um, in, in trying to get some pressure on Johnny Sullivan. Um, you know, it, another component to this is, with our unfortunate 0 and 3 start this game now is mm -hmm. from here on out and it has been from from week 4 you got to win 
yep. can't afford to lose anymore. And, and I mean, even if we would lose this one and win the rest of them, um, and Grandview would somehow trip up or something, something like that, six four and one is not going to put you. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Yeah, six four and one is not going to put you in the playoffs. This is our best chance. We have to win here, and then you know, fortunately, the rest of the road is a lot easier. But and that's something that can maybe even <clears throat> play in our favor. The fact that this is you know almost a do or die game. Yep, you know, yep, they're yep. kind of cruising right now. Yep. You know, not um, don't really not saying they don't have much to play for. The Rocket Ladder is a rivalry game. Yep. They're going to come out with everything they got, but at the same time, it's their backs are not completely up against the wall. They've the almost the won the North at this point. Yeah. So why? Right. Yeah. You know, after this game, all they have left is three games that yeah. honestly they should be favored by fifty points, if not more. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're they're going to have an easy easy road after this, and so yeah, they could already start looking at the playoffs, and maybe they could overlook us. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll happen, being it's a rock and ladder game, and they really really don't want to lose to us mm-hmm. just as bad as we really don't want to lose to them. But yeah, and you know, just talking about the Rashawn Coleman injury, don't want to harp on that too much, but um, it's just another opportunity for somebody to come in and step exactly. up. And why not step up on? The Probably stage. the biggest stage of the season yeah. that they're yeah. going to play in, and uh, you know, look forward to seeing somebody come out there. We don't know what the game plan is exactly. Who's mm-hmm. going to fill in for Rashawn, or how they're going to move some different pieces around, possibly. But um, I, I look forward to a good effort for the states, no matter who's on the field. To be honest with you, I mean, this team's rolling right now. They're playing with a lot of energy, a lot of intensity. Um, you know, last last week's Grayson game really found themselves again in the in the second half and finished it off. Yeah, for sure. So again, green view on on Saturday up in Des Moines. Um, men's soccer, or you know, talk about uh, women's volleyball. Yeah, women's volleyball. Um, <clears throat> a couple of big games, and you know, they're big games. They're, they're they are literally playing for their postseason line. They literally, they, they have to they win. win. Um, they can they cannot afford to lose. They have one. to win. Uh, they're playing number eleven Grandview in Des Moines. Right. Um, Grandview is twenty two and nine. Um, but the statesmen have proved that they can push them a little bit, yeah. and you know, with these, you know, we're gonna talk about rivalry games, and you know, talk about when teams are backed up against the wall, anything can happen. And this team has proven they can take a step, and they've proven they can compete with them. Um, I think it's just a matter of the statesmen, you know, coming out hot like they did um, against Clark, and coming out well as they did against Grandview in in the first game um, that they played with them, and and just finishing, you know, just realizing, hey, we got this team. Right where we want it, we gotta we gotta end it. Yeah, and if they can do mm-hmm. that, and some and go on go on the road to Grandview and pull out a win. <coughs> then you got Mount Mercy on Tuesday. Uh, that's at home. And senior night. Senior night. So you know you got a lot of things to play for there, yep. especially those seniors. Um, Mount Mercy's eighteen and ten. Another team that uh, Coach Cook feels we match up well with. And pretty similar. I feel as though they're pretty similar to Clark. Um, and. You know, who, who knows what can happen? I mean, it, uh, crazier things have happened, especially oh, yeah. in in this conference and, and in the AI. Um, this team is more than capable of coming out with a couple of wins and backdooring it into the uh, the playoffs. Yeah. yeah, you saw in that first and third set the other day that they can, when they are executing at the highest level, play really, really good volleyball. And if they can execute a majority of the time for the game, it's not going to be perfect. But if they can do it majority of the game, mm-hmm. there's more than enough chance, as you said. Yeah, and, bo- and both these teams, Grandview and Mount Mercy, have dropped some games that they probably shouldn't have dropped. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, any- anything can happen. This is, yeah. this is, you know, I want to call it the wild, wild west, but it's a wild yeah. Midwest. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> I, I fully expect that, uh, well, hope, let's go with that, that the seniors, um, knowing that this is their last uh, last chance, last weekend, um, Potentially could be the end, and they just go out and lay it all on the line and say, mm-hmm. you know what, if I'm going to finish it, I'm going to finish it strong, and we finish yep. it on my terms and all that. I did it my way. We're going to talk about Frank Sinatra <laughs> show and all. That. So yeah, let's let's hope that they uh, they finish out strong and they have they have nothing left on the court and, and all that. So all right, um, I'm going to talk about women's soccer first. So women's soccer going up against Evangel, as we said, as both soccer is doing Senior Day this Saturday. So hope everyone can come out. And support that evangel both games and for the women we'll see what happens i don't know if will willie and kuga fountain or zoe ganley are good to go i haven't really heard anything I but heard either hopefully they're set to go riley lugwaits told us that she's ready to return so that's she really make good. it happen one way or yeah. another she doesn't care <laughs> yeah she's gonna play in her last home game which is great especially with her parents coming yeah. out so yeah. have the starting goalie back in that which maybe will give some confidence in defense yeah. And <clears throat> we'll have to see. It will be a hard game. I mean, the Statesmen are 
for the most part out of the postseason tournament unless they win no, two and out. everyone yeah. just they're they're out the because cookie, yeah they've already lo- they've already lost uh, tiebreakers yeah, everybody but, so yeah, yeah. It, the record unfortunately wise, yeah. it was not looking good but a chance to play for something at home yeah. on senior day and a couple of the seniors maybe they can get some good action and really make a statement they are going up against evangel which is six one and two third in the heart so it will be a hard battle yeah. and i'm sure evangel is going to be looking to solidify their spot in that tournament because they don't want to fall and end up playing someone above them so it will be a battle and we'll see how statesmen respond and getting a couple people back yeah see how they play see here all right um then you got the uh oh sorry you're not done you sold missouri valley next wednesday Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we have Missouri Valley next Wednesday on the As road. Said, we have Missouri Valley. That will end the year for both teams. Yeah. Uh, Missouri Valley is, I think they are fourth or fifth in the standings. I think it might be down a smidge or two lower, but either way, it's a solid yeah, the team. W- the women's team isn't a fluke. Yeah. Uh, the men's team, obviously, is really good yeah. as well, but both of them are still right in the mix of it, so it will be hard. One of the longer road trips for the statesmen to take, so... We'll see, but it'll be the last game of the year for them. As we said, they're not going to postseason on the women's side. So hopefully they can finish strong and really make some strides to give some some confidence for those younger players going into next season. Exactly. All right, um, nightcaps for both of those nights. Uh, the men will <clears throat> finish off um, senior day again for the men. And, you know, what better way than to just, you know, beat the crud out of the Crusaders. So uh, they're one of the worst teams in the conference. Again, not, not trying to bash them, but they're – there are one that you, we just need to go out and win, get up big, give some other people the chances to play. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of seniors that don't play. This is a pretty good senior class. So um, hopefully everybody gets an opportunity to play and stay they can healthy. rest a little bit. Yeah, yeah. stay healthy is going to be yeah. the biggest part. So um, take care of business on Saturday. And then you got a really big one against Missouri Valley. Uh, like I said, we're number 18 in the M- MRPI, and uh, Missouri Valley is number 19. So this is a, a win that you get it. Now all of a sudden, hopefully you're in the top 16, and I think the way we understand it is top 16. And if you if they accept your host bid, the NAIA, then um, you take care of business, do enough in the postseason tournament. Now you're going to nationals, and um, you're hopefully hosting one of those opening round uh, um, regionals. regionals. Yeah, uh, opening round tournaments where you have three yeah. teams and everything. So um, which would be huge because you only have to win one game at opening round, you two for first three, and then the winner of that place won. So. Anyhow, big, big game there. Missouri Valley was at one time ranked number one. They've fallen on hard times, but they're starting to come back and get their footing again. So they're going to want to mess with us. They're going to want to solidify their own uh, Nationals uh, resume. Uh, so that's going to be a really tough one. Um, you know, that would be a huge uh, feather in, uh, in the hat for, for William Penn to see if we can get it. So yeah, that will end out the year, and then they go to postseason. Uh, Missouri Valley conference. is – not going to be an easy game, you know. They're no. they're kind of looking to solidify themselves for an, for a bigger national bid themselves. Yeah. And so you got a couple of teams are you know trying to solidify themselves in the national title hunt picture. Um, and you know just going back to what you said about uh, hosting a perhaps hosting a, uh, a national bid. There's there's not I don't think not much of a better place to host a bid than yeah. than Dross Field. I mean it's beautiful beautiful place but hopefully the guys can get it done and we can get that i mean that'd be huge um not only for the program but for our school i think to be yeah. able to do that no oh, i think yeah. that place would be rocking if uh, in a couple well, oh, yeah. a couple weeks it's actually just under a month so it's, it's a while down the road but but gotta take care awesome. of business yeah, oh, yeah. can't, can't yeah. put the cart in front of the horses nope. Nope. as you nope. say but nope. right. um missouri valley isn't gonna be easy i'm looking for the guys to go out there and take care of business they like they have all year yeah. yeah and it would be the second year in a row that they beat missouri mm-hmm. valley which would be probably a first would be my guess i would guess so <laughs> i mean they've they've since we've been in the heart outside of, I think, one game, we've given Missouri Valley fits. Like, we've matched up pretty well against them. Yeah, and Missouri Valley is going to be frustrated. I don't know if they had injuries, and that's why they're down, or maybe it was just turnover. They lost some guys. I don't remember off the top of my head who was on and now off the team from last year, but there's a reason they've gone to two, maybe three straight national title games. Yeah. And just unfortunately, they've lost <coughs> for them. They've <coughs> lost all three of them. So I'm sure at some point back in their brain, they're like, no, we're going to get back to this. Mm-hmm. So this will be the final test of the Statesman team. And if they can go down there on the road, beat Missouri Valley, that would be the cap 
to a fantastic season and really show the NAIA that they belong in the top 16 yeah. and that they deserve to host and hopefully more to the point, they deserve to go on to that final site yeah. and really compete with the top teams in the nation. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so yeah, we'll see what men's soccer uh, does down the pipe. Um, cross country, they will be at the uh, up in Cedar Rapids on Saturday. NAIA Seminole Valley Stampede, one of the more interesting uh, names for a for a meet, but Mount Mercy hosts it, and uh, just a lot of really strong NAIA teams will be up there. And unfortunately, our teams are really banged up right now, so I don't know exactly who Coach Goswich is going to be sending up there. Uh, the women's team might, unfortunately, again be shy of a full team. Uh, so we'll see, but uh, they're nursing, nursing a whole lot of injuries and some other uh, unfortunate things. So um, I guess we'll see what happens. It'll be the regular season finale, one final tune-up before um, the conference meet in three Saturdays from now. So uh, we'll see. Um, men's basketball. Yeah, men's basketball getting <clears throat> going go. on, on Sunday um, against Presentation. Um, they open they open the season as number four in the NAIA rankings. Yep. Uh, they're picked to win the Heart of America, reclaim um, reclaim the title after uh, they finished third last year, but had won the three previous titles. Um, so we'll see what this men's basketball team has in store. I know the coaches are pretty high on this team and with what they can do. A little bit younger this year, um, but super they're super impressed with the athleticism that this team brings. I mean, we have you know guys that can coming out the bench starters that just bring a great deal of athleticism and then you got a um, you know you got some guys that were here last year that redshirted that have kind of learned the statesman way mm -hmm. and you know the system and um, you know we're going to see the typical run and gun statesman offense or statesman offense you know just getting up and down the court uh, creating turnovers and just really controlling the pace of play and uh, you know you, you saw that a little bit you saw some flashes of it um, in the scrimmage with um, Southeastern uh, last week, um, I, I, you're going to see it again tonight, I'm sure, um, in their scrimmage with Indian Hills. Um, Nate Gehring looked really good, I thought, in that um, in that scrimmage with Southeastern. Um, he was able to space the floor for a big man and get down and, and finish strong at the rim. Um, saw some good things out of uh, Dexter Hood, point guard, uh, Jared Peel, another guard. Um, saw some really good things from the Statesman team, and you know I expect they're going to be right there in the thick of things. Um, you know, in the heart of America, and then the NAI in general. Yeah. I mean, yep. there's a reason this team is picked, picked so high, and and, and I know um, the coaches are saying, you know, we just want to focus on ourselves. We kind of want to, you know, not not look at the rankings too much, not look into it, just focus on ourselves and what we got to do to get better as a team. Because, like I said, there's a lot of new faces. There's still a lot of things to learn, and um, but a good opportunity on Sunday to open it up with a bang against presentation. Yeah. I know they, they definitely the coaching staff that is uh you know I feel like we're overhyped a little bit but you know what overhyped is better than underhyped is what they've been saying and excited to uh you know have the target on the back again and and see what they're gonna do but guarantee there will be a lot of dunking this year there will be a lot of uh, uh fast break points and uh well, hopefully the guys just get after it and uh bulldog a little bit and speaking of that you know that's going to happen on the women's side so yeah I'm gonna switch it over and talk about the women they're uh opening up next tuesday against Tabor. uh it's an nai division two team coach williamson says he's never played them before he has no idea really what to expect but um you know, try them out and see what they what they are the team's 25th in the nation probably a little lower than they were expecting to be after what we did last year but you know when you lose Bashi wabarocha um Everybody else in the conference felt like, well, what's this team left? Mm -hmm. I think there there's going to be a lot left, I mean, a lot of really good talent back. But um, recruiting wise, uh, they went out and scoured the planet and found a whole bunch of good uh, athletes. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be a different squad this year as far as how we attack. Um, could be a lot more points coming from the outside versus because you don't have Vashti mm -hmm. down there in the paint. But um, expect that the team is going to work their tail off on defense, and that's going to be the trademark. And keeping a lot of squads under 60 points and it might not always be you know it's not gonna be 100 to you know 80 like basketball team or men excuse me but they're gonna win a lot of games 65 55 i bet and yeah, win yeah. a lot of games period yeah, yeah and, we, and we've talked about <laughs> it you know the the loss of ashi obviously it's not gonna be easy to fill those shoes but this is a system right that coach williamson has and that that system is you know 
tight defense and create turnovers and hit shots at the other end. I, it yeah. sounds so simple, but if you watch this team play and watch this team practice, uh, you know it, it's so it's so technical the way that they play and the way they're able to wear you down. And at the end, this poll we saw it so many times last year. You know, uh, we kind of you know jostle with the team back and forth the first half, second half, come out and just make those necessary adjustments and really blow them out of the water. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we have returning All-American Kate Illatello. She's coming back for her senior season. What a season she had last year. You know, I, I look for her to improve. And then, you know, Brenda Pennington, um, you know, not somebody that on, on the stat sheet's going to jump out to you, but the way she runs the offense is just, it's, it's awesome. And um, I look for her to assert herself on the offensive end maybe a little more this year um, rather than feeding the ball in down low. Uh, there's some pieces down low as well, though. So yeah. let's look for this team to, you know, I think this team's going to look very similar to last year. Yeah. And I'm the new guy here. I, <laughs> you haven't even seen him play, so I you're just guessing. <laughs> play or seen William Penn basketball. The only thing I've seen is them demolish uh, my old alma mater, Vanguard, last year in the right. round the tournament. So, uh, whoops. Uh, <laughs> but I'm excited. Vanguard is a big basketball school. They don't have football, so it's kind of in the gym. That's where all the students come out and support. So I'm excited. Even there was a huge crowd at the scrimmage. Yeah. The last, what was that, Sunday, Saturday, Wednesday, Wednesday, whatever. Wednesday. Yeah, One and of those it, days. It, it, days are going it was by a day. way. It was a day of the week. Yeah, yeah it, was. it was a day of the week. But to see a big crowd out there for just a scrimmage, yeah. fantastic. I am excited to get to know these players, get to watch them, see how these teams develop. A lot of success here at William Penn. And to go to another great basketball school is really exciting for me. And I'm along for the ride. I'm all in. Let's go and yeah. see where this team, both of them, can go because – a couple championships for the women, the men looking to get back into it. Basketball season is a great time in college sports, yeah. and I'm excited to see that gym rocking. Yeah, no, it should be really exciting. Uh, both teams, high expectations, but that's exactly where they want them to be. They, you know, you want to have uh, the, the target on your back versus having to chase everybody and look up the standings. So look, looking down on people is okay every once in a while. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I think that's everything. Go ahead. I'm uh, well, something women's obviously. golf, just a quick note, oh, yeah, done for... till spring. Right. So that was yep. the last thing, the heart preview. So the long winter awaits, and then we'll see how they come out with a fresh squad. Or not new face, not fresh as in new, but relax, refreshed and working throughout the winter whenever yep. they can. And then bowling, they have this weekend off, and then the next weekend will be their next bid. So the other sports are – Almost all off now. Yeah, yeah. So and, and, and wrestling starts up in a couple of weeks. That's why we're not talking about them yet. And then obviously track um, for you know winter sports is way down the road in uh, early December if they even have one in December. So, anywho, yeah, uh, it should be an exciting week. Uh, let's see if we can get that. Uh, if we do, when we do, never mind. When we do, we'll bring the rock and ladder trophy into the um, the studio uh, <laughs> next week. So we'll have it. All right, um, for Jared Goodman and Justin Burtis, I'm Wade Steinloggy. Uh, once again, thanks to uh, Ken and Ginger also of Oskaloosa News for allowing us to use their studio here in a wonderful Penn Central Mall. Um, soon we're going to have axe X throwing. I was thinking yeah. this week, but... It'll be tonight. Tonight. Well, tonight, there you go. So when you guys catch this, um, I don't think you'll probably get in over there, but uh, soon come over to Penn Central Mall, and uh, if you can't uh, do some axe throwing... Um, you know, go right across the way and play some arcade games. Check out uh, Mi Ranchito Pizza Ranch, whatever. Do some do some shopping here in in Penn Central Mall. So come buy uh, a picture from Oski News. There you go. Buy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks again. Uh, you're inside the playbook. Until next week, go Statesman.